Hi everyone and welcome to this Odoo webinar. My name is Amy Caroline. I'm a functional support analyst and also the Odoo expert who does the Odoo e-learning videos. Now in this webinar we're going to talk about e-learning which is extremely important especially during the COVID outbreak right now. So many people are working from home or working remotely. I'm actually doing this uh, webinar from home right now and a lot of professors Hi, and teachers and have this had Odoo to... Oh, webinar. My excuse me. I'm a functional support analyst and also Sorry about that. I'm watching myself on YouTube right now so I can maybe get to your questions later. Um, but a lot of professors and teachers um, are also going to be moving their courses um, to online right now as well. So it's really important um, to have an e-learning application like we do at Odoo. So the things I'm going to be covering are first how to get started. We are going to um, open a database and we are going to create a course together. Um, and then I'm going to show you how you can upload your content, such as videos, presentations, um, and so on. And we're also going to see how we can measure, measure participation and also how we can get feedback from our students or the participants. Now, some of these additional uh, features, will uh, we will need some additional applications, but I'll talk about that when we get to it, so don't worry. And then lastly, I'm going to talk about how we can sell our online courses. Okay, so let's get straight to it. Um, but before that, let me mention that if you have any questions um, during this webinar, you can go ahead and ask them in the live chat or in the comment section of YouTube. Um, my colleague, Amanda, will be answering your questions live. So he'll be there um, to answer anything that you might need to know. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm going to create a new database. And right now, I'm going to install eLearning and website. Now, these applications together are considered one app free. So I'm going to go ahead and select these and configure. Okay, so I'll need to add my name, AC, and then my email. Um, let's see here. It's obviously not my real email, but that's okay. Gmail.com uh, and my company name. So I'm going to call this um, Egypt Course. And then I'm going to go ahead and choose my company size and also my primary interest. I'm going to say that I am a teacher. All right, and then we're going to click on Start Now. And once our database is built, we're going to dive into the e-learning application. Uh, but since we are adding the website application, it's going to first prompt me to uh, choose a theme for my website. I'm going to skip that step. So I'm just going to click on the left corner and you're going to see right here that I do need to activate my database. That's extremely important. I have four hours to activate my database. Um, so if I start adding data and I don't activate it by the email link, then all of my data will be lost. So let's go ahead and jump over to my email. Okay, I haven't received the link yet. I probably made a typo, but that's okay if that happens. We can click on the pending activation. Um, and I see here that I did make a typo, so we're going to go ahead and correct that and we'll click on resend. And then I will get that email within three minutes as we see here, um, and then I can go back and check it. And as soon as I uh, receive the activation email, which I did here, I can click here to activate the database. Okay, so let's do that now. Okay, we're all done. We can go straight to the DB and then we can start creating some courses. Okay, now I have 15 days. All right, so I'm going to go straight to the e-learning application. Here is where I will have my dashboard overview of all of the courses. We don't have any yet, as you can see, but we're going to create one simply by clicking on the Create button. Okay, as soon as we do that, we need to add our course information. So my course is about ancient Egypt, actually. Okay, so I'm going to add that as the course title, and I'm going to create some tags. So uh, my first tag is going to be history. I'm going to choose that as a tag, and then click on save and close, and then the next tag is going to be Egypt. And these tags will appear on the website, as we will see later on. Okay, and the next thing I want to do is add a picture for my course. So I'm going to choose this cool picture of a pyramid. Okay, then the next thing we will be able to do or that we're prompted to do is actually start adding some content. Now, this is really important, the most important thing, in fact, but I'm going to skip that step right now. And I'm going to go straight to the description tab and I'm going to add a description, one that I wrote earlier. So I'm copying and pasting it here. Okay, and then we're going to go to the next tab over options, and here is where we can configure our course a bit more. So uh, we have our course type. We can say that it's documentation or training. I'm going to select training, 
Okay, we have the responsible, so this is my user, um, but this might be um, the teacher who is responsible for the course or the professor um, or just the person who's putting the course together or the documentation. Okay, and then we can decide who should enroll in this course. If it's open to the public, anyone can enroll or if it's only on invitation. So if I have um, a particular class of students, I might to only want to invite those students. So I can click on invitation. And when I select that option, I can then go ahead and invite some people. So if I click on invite, I'll be able to send them an email. I can add the recipients here. I can even modify this if I, if I would like to. Um, we do have some smart code here. So it will say dear and then the name of the person, uh, the name of the contact who we're sending the email to. And they can click on this link to access the course. Okay, but I'm going to go ahead and leave this as public. Then down below, we can see how this course will be displayed. So if this will be visible to the public or to members only. Okay, and we can also show um, featured content. So if you want to um, show the latest published, the most voted, or the most viewed, um, what content we would like to feature simply. Okay. Then on the left, we can click this really neat option, which will allow our participants to actually rate the course. And I'm going to show you that later on when we publish our course. But let's go on to the next thing, Karma Rules. Now, Karma is really neat. This will um, give people points when they participate. So it really encourages uh, participation um, from your um, participants or your students, um, and uh, really motivates them to get involved in this course. Um, so they can get points by ranking the course or adding a comment. And of course, you can change the amount here. So for ranking the course, I might give them 500 points. Seems a bit excessive, but I do have that possibility. Okay, and then lastly, we have some general statistics about the course. So we can see um, the visits, uh, the ratings, and so on. All right, but now let's get to the content. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the content tab. And actually, before I start creating something, I need to be sure I save my course. And I will show you why in just a minute. So I'm gonna click on save, and then I can go back to edit. So let's first add a section, okay, and my first section is going to be Introduction to Ancient Egypt, all right, and then I'm going to add some content. All right, we need to save the course first so it will appear here. Um, if we don't save, then it doesn't yet exist, um, and it will not appear in this list and ask you to create and edit a new course, um, but of course it does exist because we just created it, so be sure you save all the time. All right, so we're going to upload our first uh, section, which is actually going to be a video. So for type here, instead of document, I'm going to select video. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the document URL. So I took a URL from YouTube. Now, as you saw right away, some information was automatically populated, like the title. It also automatically updates the duration, which is six minutes. Now, this is really cool. The duration is important um, so your students or participants can see how much um, time they may have to spend on this section. So I have six minutes here, which is the length of the video. But if I want my students to watch a video twice, for example, I might change that and say 12 minutes. All right. Then under the description section, this is really cool. It will also automatically populate with the description that you have on that YouTube video as well. But of course, we can modify this. So let's remove some of this. Okay. Then next, we can add some external links or so just some additional information that could be useful for um, our participants or students. So I'm going to go ahead and add some information about some Egyptian gods. So let's go ahead and add this one here. I'm going to copy and paste my link just like that. Okay, we're going to add a second one. And I'm going to copy and paste my link here as well. Okay, and then we are going to um, save this. Um, but actually, before we save this, I'm missing something that is critical for you guys, the quiz. We want to be able to quiz our students if we need to. So we're going to go over to the quiz section, and we're actually going to add some questions. So this will quiz them on um, the video that they just saw or the, the content that they just saw. So let's go ahead and add some questions. So the first one is, how did this civilization name their rulers? So this is, might be interesting for you guys as well. So let's go ahead and say pharaohs. And we're going to add a second line. Okay, and then let's add a third one. 
sadly the answer is not sacred cats okay and I'm gonna select which answer is correct now because of my view you this uh, label is being cut off but if I hover over it I will see that it is to select the correct answer and then we're gonna click on save and new because we'll go ahead and add a second question so I'm gonna copy my paste my question here as well which ancient Egyptian innovation is the ancestor of paper okay so let's go ahead and add some information pyramids um, some answers Okay, and then lastly, okay, and then we're gonna say which answer is correct. And then we're gonna save and close this. And then we have the quiz on the left, we're gonna see some rewards for how they answer. So they can get 10 points um, for the first time. They get both questions correct, and then you, you will get different um, amounts of points for the next attempts and you can change this as well. So you can say the first time you get 100 points, but the second time you only get seven. Okay, so we'll encourage your students to do the best that they can. And then we will also have some statistics about um, this particular section. Okay, now before I move on as well, I wanna go back to the document section and I'm gonna allow the preview. Okay, this will allow someone who's not enrolled in the course to still see the content. Okay, then we're gonna save and close this. So you, we have our nice little section and we also have our content there. I'm gonna add a second section. Okay, and um, I added some content. So let's do the section first. This is gonna be mummies. And then we're gonna add the content. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to call this mummies unwrapped. Okay, I'm gonna add a photo. Okay. And for the type, we're actually gonna say this is an infographic, so the photo is uh, the content that's, in, that's important here. Okay, let's go ahead and say this will take one hour. I really want them to study this information. And then as always, we can add a description um, and external links, a quiz, but I won't do that here. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on save and new because I'm gonna add as well some new content to um, this section. Okay, so first we want a picture and I'm gonna call this Mummies Advanced. Okay, and at any point when you're adding content, you can also create tags for your content as well, and you're going to be able to create those on the fly or reuse ones that already exist on your database. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep this as document, and we're actually gonna upload a PDF here about our mummies, okay? And then where you can add a description as well. Um, let's add something here. Let's just say, let's take a closer look at mummies. And this is going to take an hour and 25 minutes. And then we're going to save and close. Okay, so we have our nice course here so far, but what we need to do next is to publish the course. All right, we want our students to be able to access it. So let's save first here. Always, always, always save. I can't emphasize that enough. And then we're gonna go to the website and this is going to redirect us to the website application and we're going to see that page. So the first thing to do is to publish it here. All right, and you also need to um, publish each uh, bit of content as well, each section. And we can do that by clicking here. Okay, and we're gonna be able to publish. I'm gonna pause my video before it starts. And then we're gonna publish this and we see those external links. We also have the quiz. Okay, so I can go ahead and answer the questions here. Amazing, I did a great job and then I can move on to the next section. All right, so that's super easy. And at any point, my students can write a review. They can do that by clicking here. They can also share this or I can go back to the course and when I'm looking at the course overview, I can also review here as well. Okay, so I'm gonna click on the add a review button. Of course, this deserves five stars. Okay, and then I can send, and that will that review will be uh, posted. Okay, so let's go ahead and publish this content as well, quickly. All right, looks good. Now I wanna go back to my course, something really cool that I wanna show you here. Uh, actually, a couple things. First of all, if you wanna have an idea of what this will look like um, on the mobile view, you can click on this little um, mobile icon here and you can actually have an idea of what that will look like. Because we know that some students or some participants might 
might prefer to actually look at this on their mobile device rather than on the computer so we can have an idea of what that looks like and you can actually navigate your website from here as well all right and you can also edit the content of this course from the website application so you don't need to do that only from the e-learning application you can do that from here as well you can see these add content buttons you also have add content and add section here and you can edit the actual web page as well um, so i can um, edit the description for example, I can also add building blocks to design this web page however I would like. Now we have a lot of um, e-learning courses, Odoo e-learning courses and webinars about the website application. So you should definitely check those out if you want to um, see in more detail how you can customize your web pages. Um, but we're not going to cover that for now. So I'm going to discard this. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to the back end, which we can do simply by from edit click on edit and back end. Okay, so as you saw, creating a new course uh, was so easy. We even have uh, the rating here or the comments. I love it. That shows up in the chatter. Um, so that didn't take any time at all. But now I want to talk about some additional features. So I'm actually going to go over to another database that I created where I added some demo data. Okay, so as you can see, I have more courses here. All right. Um, and here I have demo data. I activated some additional options as well. So I went to configuration settings and from the settings page, I activated um, the forum, uh, mailing certifications and uh, sell on e-commerce. Now some of these or all of these actually do involve um, additional applications. Some of them are paid applications. So for example, um, to mail our participants via mass mailing, I will need the email marketing or mass mailing application. Okay, to sell in e-commerce, I will need e-commerce and also invoicing. So if you're right now, if you're using the one app free database, you should get a warning that says you're about to install the paid app um, if you will be charged for using that feature. So. It should be okay, but let's go ahead and look at it. So I'm going to go to my courses and the course I'm going to focus on today will be the basics of gardening. So I'm going to click on the basics of gardening. And the first thing I want to do is make sure that my participants have a way to ask questions or to discuss with each other. And I'm going to do that through a forum. So I'm going to go to options. And we have some additional options here since we activated those uh, features in the settings. And you'll notice that right away we have form under the communication section. Now I already have a form created, uh, but I can create and edit one on the fly by clicking create and edit. And I can also go to forum and create a new form from here as well. All right, but let's go ahead and just check out the one that already exists here. So I'm going to open it up. All right, we have some options for the form. Um, so this can be a form that's for asking questions or also one uh, for discussions. Okay, so I have that choice. If I'm in a multi-website environment, I can also specify the website, but it's not mandatory, so I won't do that here. Okay, I also can choose the order of posts. So the last updated, the newest, um, the most voted, relevance, and answered. Okay, I have the e-learning course. In this case, it's the basics of gardening, and I can also add a description as well. Now, here we also have some karma, so um, our participants can get points if they ask questions. Um, with, and this as well is super great for encouraging student participation. Um, they can also upvote questions, um, they lose points if they downvote questions, and you can change um, the amount of points that they gain or lose as well here. All right, great, so let's save this. Okay, and something I want to point out is we will always be able to access the posts from the back end here um, by going to form post the smart button. All right, I'll show you that um, in a little bit, but let's go to the contents now. Something that's also very useful is adding a certification. Okay, so I'm going to actually add a section here. Um, I'm going to call it certification simply, and then I'm going to click on add certification. Okay. Okay, well, be sure we spell that correctly. No typos. And um, then we're going to have our course. We're going to be able to choose the type, which was already selected when I clicked on add certification. Okay, and then we can choose the specific certification if we've already created one, or as usual, we can create and edit one on the fly. 
very convenient. I'm going to go ahead and choose a cert certification that already exists, which is TREES, and I'm going to open this up to be able to add questions or modify questions um, for this exam or certification. Okay, so we have a section here, Tree Basics, and we already have a question that exists. So I'm going to open this up to show you what it looks like. So the question is, how many kinds of trees exist? I can edit this. I just added a question mark. Um, and then we have different question types. So if you want to use a multiple line box, single line box, um, in this case, I chose a multiple choice. Um, question with only one correct answer. Okay, so I have my choices and then I have chosen the correct answer. Okay, I can always um, add more options later on and then save. Okay, um, quickly though, before I go away, I actually do want to show you some options that you can have on each question. Um, so you can say if it's mandatory, um, and then you also have a display mode, um, and you can allow comments if you would like to as well. Okay, so I'm going to point that out, save. And then before we close the, cert uh, the certification, I'm going to go to the Options tab. Okay, here we can also edit the layout. Um, we, can we can edit the access as well, which is really cool. So I can say anyone with the link can take this or invited people only. Um, if I say invited people only, I can uh, limit the amount of attempts. Okay, so in this case, I can say that they can um, only try this once. Okay, I can also say login is required. And if login is required, we can also give a badge, which is pretty neat. Okay, then we have some scoring options as well. So I can say we won't score. Um, we will score with the answers at the end. Um, or we will score without answers at the end. So for example, if um, my participant needs to pay for the certification, I might say that I will just score without the answers at the end so that they can't memorize the um, correct and wrong answers and retake it. Then we have our passing score as well here, um, which we can modify. So I could say you have to get everything correct if you want the certif certificate. So let's go ahead and save this. Okay, um, and then we're going to save and close. And like we did for the other content, we will need to um, publish this on the website. I'm going to do that in just a second. But before I do, I also want to talk about how you can sell your course online. Now, I mentioned that a little bit with the certificate. If you have um, a course for sale, then you may want to add certification with that particular type of course. So we're going to go to options. And in the enroll policy, after I activated that option from the configuration settings page, I now can select on payment here. Okay, when I select that, I of course will need to create a sellable product for this course as well. So we're going to go to products and I'm going to create and edit a new product on the fly. Okay, so I'm going to call it basics of gardening. All right, and then I'm going to add a price, let's say 50 euros. This will be a service. And then I'm going to um, simply save this right now um, so that I can save my course, but I will need to publish it on my website. So we're going to click on save, save again. Okay, then I can go to that product and I'm going to publish it on my website by clicking here. Okay, now that it's published, let's go to our courses. Okay, and I'm going to go to the basics of gardening. Okay, and when I'm looking at the basics of gardening, I'm going to see that I can now purchase it. It's 50 euros. Okay, I also have um, some free previews. If I am not enrolled in the course, we see the certification since um, I'm the admin. I can go ahead and publish this. So let's click there and let's publish this. Okay, once it's published, we're going to go back to the course. Okay, and here we're also going to be able to um, access the form as well. This is where people will be able to ask their questions, um, and that's always encouraged, and we can answer as well. Um, so we do have one question. There's already an answer that we can see, but I can go ahead and add another answer and then post. Okay, hopefully I will reply something that's more useful than that, <laughs> but that's how it works for now. But if we want to um, keep track of how people are doing on the certifications or even contact our participants, we can do that as well. So we're going to jump back to the back end, okay, edit and back end. So that's just a really convenient shortcut. 
Okay, again, um, for the smart buttons, we're going to be able to see if um, someone has become certified, which no one has, and we can actually communicate with our attendees. So I can send an email to all of my uh, participants. Now this is using the uh, mass mailing or email marketing um, application, and it's really convenient. I can add a subject. I have um, some really nice templates, so it will give me a really cool um, email to send um, to my participants. Okay, and of course we have um, the correct record matched here. All right, but I can also message the people who are um, following this course through the chatter as well. You won't have the super cool email templates which you can customize, but you can send a message this way. It will send an email only to the people who are following here. So some of the followers are people who um, previously purchased this course. Um, and I can just say, hi, um, new content available and then send. Okay, now something else we want to do is of course be able to keep track of um, how well people are doing, as I said earlier, when they take the certification. Um, on this course in particular, no one has taken the certification yet, but that's okay, we're gonna go ahead and check out another certification. Okay, so I have one here. All right, I have my sections and my questions, which I can see. And then I can also check who has taken this and I can look at their um, specific tests and I can see how well they did. Okay, so um, Douglas did super, super well. He got 100%, okay? Um, but if he had some questions wrong, I can see um, which ones he did not um, answer correctly. Okay, so for example, it wouldn't be checked as correct right here, um, but right now we see free text, um, so it may need to be graded another way. All right, so as you can see, the e-learning application, it's um, so easy to use, it's so easy to set up. And if you guys have any questions that um, you didn't ask during the live webinar right now, that's okay, you can always ask them later on. Okay, you can send an email to webinars at odoo.com. Um, and uh, I hope you all enjoyed this. Again, if you have more questions, um, send your emails to webinars at odoo.com. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you have a great rest of your day.